Namaha. Come, sit with me for a while. Today, I want to talk about karma. Karma, that wonderful word that we use so much in popular conversation. From everything from stubbing our toe to the breaking up in relationships or the cosmic world falling on our heads. We blame it all on karma. But what really is karma? Let us go back into ancient Indian history and you will see that karma came into popular use around the 6th century at about the time of the Buddha because people were starting to live in city civilizations across India and life became kind of cyclical. People saw themselves living, being born, living, getting old, dying, and then that's it. And that, that became known as the wheel of life of samsara. And this, this whole idea of reincarnation comes from that. And what we discover is that karma, the word means action, your acts. But it later came to be known as the consequence of your actions. That means every thought, every word, every deed has a consequence. And that becomes your karma. So a child, perhaps a baby, is born with little or no karma because it has no thoughts and no ideas to start with. But it may have inherited karma from its parents on its DNA and its ancestral legacy, you know, whether it was diseases or psychological makeup or something could be inherited. Or it could also come from past lives, which is this idea of the Akashic record that we can bring with us all this information into this life from the jiva, this immortal being that travels with us. But in this life, where does karma come from? You know, I'm born. And then the, all the Vedic seers, the yogis, the tantrics, all believed that karma comes from one simple thing, desire. Desire or icha or karma. Imagine the child saying, I want food. I want that toy. I want, I want, I want. And our whole life becomes a game of I want. And everything we want, we kind of create a thought pattern about, we create a movement into, and this becomes our lives. And not only that, it's also about the consequences we desire, the desires we have, so that it becomes about what outcomes I'd like. I'd like a relationship. I'd like to be happy. I'd like to have all these things. And then if I don't get what I want, or if I don't get the outcomes I desire, I get upset, I get traumatized, I get frustrated. And that becomes what can be called negative karma. It stores up in me as karma. And if I do good again, if I become human and I do good in the world and I help other people, I get good karma. So I feel light and I feel happy and I feel graceful. Now, when they looked at what it was that they thought was the cause of this desire, of this karma that came into action. They called this state avidya, meaning ignorance. The ignorance of not knowing who you really are, of feeling incomplete, of feeling unfulfilled. That feeling of incompleteness, they called ignorance, avidya. And the knowledge that they thought was the cure to it was that you are this divine mind that is the whole universe, that is the vibrating source from which the universe comes into being. This is you. You are that mind. You are that vibrating principle behind everything. Now, the journey from avidya to vidya is this karmic journey. We pick up karma along the way because in trying to fill our incompleteness, we get desires and we want more and more and more and then more frustrations and more problems occur. So the tantrics figured out a way to get rid of this luggage we are carrying, this bad karma. And they said that in your belly button, at the navel chakra, the Manipura chakra, there sits a flame, a fire. 
And if I can raise that fire with prana, with energy, and light a really huge fire in my belly, then it becomes like a bonfire or a pot of fire into which I can throw all my trauma, my bad karma, my, all my diseases, my suffering, everything I can throw in there. And if I learn to throw it in there, I become lighter. And then my mind moves up to my heart center and I become more human, more compassionate, more kind, more giving. And that gives me good karma. So if I can burn my bad karma at my stomach, good karma rises. But then the tantrics say there's more to it than that because all of this is your kundalini energy rising. They say that the ideal at the end of life is to have not only gotten rid of all your bad karma, but to get rid of not your attachment to your good karma as well. Because think about it. When we do good, the I factor still remains. I did good. I helped those people. I am spiritual. I am a devotee of this teacher or that God. I am this. I am that. The I doesn't go away. We want to get to the end of life having gotten rid of the I attachment completely. And then something miraculous happens as we transcend into heavenly states. We become light as feathers, completely karma free. So this complete work is about clearing your karma. And I'm going to teach you how to get rid of all this luggage we're carrying. I'm going to teach you how to breathe, how to chant mantras, how to use techniques of visualization to heal yourself. And then not only heal yourself of the bad stuff, but become light as a feather. I look forward to teaching you, guiding you, and helping you become as light as feathers. And I hope you will join me on this journey. Namaha.